Hi everybody, today we're going to paint this lovely Segoro cactus. We're going to use 140 pound watercolor paper. This is cold pressed. I use a number 12 and number 6 round color brush. I use Payne's gray, like a Prussian or dark blue, a sepia kind of a uh, brown, any pink or purple that you have on your palette will do. And that should be good. A yellow ochre would be good too. I took my ink bottle and I made a circle on my canvas. And this is the watercolor block. Uh, arches and it's probably a seven by seven square or something like that and what I'm going to do is just wet my background I'm going to wet all the way around my moon very carefully and up to the top of the paper and to the right and left of the paper leaving the bottom third of it dry so I'm thoroughly wetting this and I'm going to drop in my colors of my sky after this is completely saturated so I'm going to grab my uh, Prussian blue or some ultramarine blue, a darker blue that you have on your palette, and any purple, and kind of mix them together a little bit and side by side on the palette. And I'm going to apply that to the sky. I want it darker on the top and kind of lighter near where the moon is. But watercolors dries a lot lighter than it looks when it's wet. So we're really going to saturate that um, background with a lot of pigment so a lot of pigment on your brush and what I'm doing is I'm adding the blue and I'm just dropping in the purple onto the palette uh, not onto the palette but onto the canvas itself and letting it kind of mix there and it looks really beautiful that way So I'm tipping it and I'm watching my paint run and I want it to look like a beautiful dusky sky. I added a little bit of pink near the bottom, a little bit of warmer color. So that's how it would appear when this, the moon is coming up and the sun is going down. While the sky is still wet, I'm dropping in more dark purples because I know that my watercolor is going to dry a lot lighter than you see when it's wet. So I want the top to be pretty dark and just beautiful colors and bright colors, clean colors. So I'm adding more blue and I'm adding more purple streaks to have the impression of, you know, those kind of streaky clouds in the distance. When the sky is completely dry, I'm adding some water to the moon area and I'm grabbing my darker brown that's probably like a sepia brown and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow or yellow ochre to it um, just to put in the impression of the craters on the moon.
So I'm mixing a bluer purple here and I'm just using what I have on my palette from before and I'm creating the mountains in the background and the foreground. So um, what you see on the right is gonna be showing and what you see on the left we're gonna kind of cover up. But it gives the impression of distant mountains or hills in the desert. I'm softening it up. I put my edge there and I'm softening it up with my brush and I'm just deciding where my land is and I'm going to scumble on the paper because the foreground is mostly, you know, the uh, grass, um, the cactus grass, whatever you call it out in the desert, rocks. Um, just an impression. It's going to be very dark here, but I still want to bring some of that color down from the sky to keep my foreground and my background um, you know, kind of in balance color wise. Okay, I really like that and it was super simple. So now I'm gonna go in with a darker color. I'm using my Payne's Gray here and I'm just creating that foreground um, area. It's close to us and it's got a hard edge. It's kind of rocky so I'm not too careful. I'm using the tip of my brush and I'm just washing in some water as I go so there's no harsh edges. And now I'm going to use the tip of my brush and create some of those Segura cactuses. I think they're called, it's, it's got a G in it, but it's so, it's hard to say. Um, you don't pronounce the G, it's Sorora cactus. And the arms on the cactus are actually very old. So in order for the cactus to reach 12 feet, it's literally like 200 years old. Um, or a hundred years old. A foot a year usually it grows and it doesn't get arms for after a hundred years. So then the um, the arms and the cactus will produce flowers at the end of the summer and it feeds bats and it feeds um, the maybe some moths and some birds and they only last for a day the cactus flowers and then after the flower falls off it becomes a fruit to eat and the ancient cactuses will host um, animals that make nests like um, owls will make a nest inside the side of the cactus it's very cool it's such an ecosystem and the cactus is ribbed because it holds the water in that way so um, the threat to it is basically wildfires. You're not even allowed to cut down a cactus in the Sonora Desert because um, it's illegal because they're so um, rare. They're, it's the only place in the world that they grow in Arizona. So I've painted in some tops of some cactuses in the distance and some old cactuses. The, the one in front of the moon is kind of big and the other one's a little smaller, making them look like they're a little further away. Um, and now we're just gonna keep moving forward and you can put as many arms on your cactuses as you want. You're the artist. And I'm just darkening them up because I, like I said before, watercolors dry a lot lighter than you 
initially put down. So you want to put this black down pretty thick because it's a nice silhouette. I'm adding some browns to the foreground to show that it's the desert sand at night and I'm going to make some marks in there to um, give the impression of the plants that grow there, really darkening up the foreground to bring it forward and just going in and adding some, you know, just some marks of plants and, and dipping in that color on top of the color. I'm not really mixing in the palette, I'm mixing on my paper itself. I let that dry I think it looks really beautiful and I'm adding some more cactuses in the foreground and I grab my number six brush and I'm trying to scumble it around trying to make some uh, beautiful marks of the landscape and still adding more color and adding more cactuses um, you just want it to have like an odd number or just a pleasant kind of a design so I'm also going to drop in some more browns and really make that foreground pop.
So there you go, that looks way better. It's a lot darker in the foreground. I'm adding the grasses with my brush, the tip of my brush, and I've added a lot of color drops into the front and to the foreground. And there you have it, this is the painting. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you did, please like and subscribe so I can create more videos for you. I thank you so much for watching. Please be well and take care, and I'll see you in the next video.